In the past 15 years, salmon has become big time industry. Not fishing, but farming. Chances are the fish you eat isn't caught on a hook, but raised in a pen. For Inside Look, where your food comes from, we start in British Columbia. Campbell River, BC, a small coastal town on Vancouver Island self-described salmon capital of the world. It's an ever-changing business. It's for, for me, um, it's provided immense opportunity. Terry Brooks is a salmon farmer. These floating pens filled with fish have been his livelihood for 18 years. The foundation of a, of a salmon farm is a, good, is a good lease, a good lease, and then well-anchored cages, well-anchored nets, and then you start with the stock of fish. Terry's fish end up in grocery stores all over the world, including the United States. He works for Nutreco, a Dutch conglomerate with 16 salmon farms in British Columbia and 80 farms around the globe. Well, the reason that we grow fish is because fish is a great food and there's a demand for it. Companies like Nutreco began farming salmon here in the mid-1980s. The fish on this farm are Pacific Chinook, but the bulk of the fish that hit grocery store shelves are actually Atlantic salmon, raised in the Pacific. Atlantic is the fish of choice for most consumers. Most people seem to prefer the more milder flavor, and of course, as farmers, we're producing what our consumers are looking for. It's big business here in British Columbia. Last year alone, BC exported 75,000 tons of farmed salmon to the United States, worth $600 million in Canadian money. Looking at a seven pound Chinook about uh, 18 months old. But the profitable industry has also become controversial. We've just launched a campaign called Farmed and Dangerous, and we are working with consumers and asking them to learn more about the risks associated with farmed salmon. Critics of the industry say consumers don't know enough about the fish they're eating. For instance, what the fish themselves are fed. This is fish feed. It's made with fish meal and fish oil. Since the fish don't eat what wild fish do, their flesh isn't the same color, it's gray. So farmers add a pigment to the food that turns their flesh pink. There's a what's essentially like a paint swath of different hues of pink, and um, salmon farmers can choose what, what level of feed or what level of color they want added to the feed. Most salmon are also fed antibiotics to keep them free of disease. If our fish get sick, of course we're going to take care of them. And if they need medication, that would be given in the feed. But Nutreco says its fish are perfectly safe and rigorously tested to make sure they're free of not only antibiotics, but other contaminants. By the time fish get to the grocery store, there's no residues beyond what are acceptable safe limits. And farmers like Terry Brooks take pride in the food they raise. Two times a week minimum I eat uh, farm salmon. And so do millions of Americans with few complaints. Still, this has become a troubled harvest. After years of problems, salmon farming has come under the microscope and the word is getting out. Concerns about food safety, salmon farms are blasted often for being a threat to the environment from the waste they produce to the fish that manage to escape their pens. Farms are not popular with fishermen on the Oregon coast. And tomorrow we're going to take a look at some of those concerns about salmon farming in part two of the salmon myth. We continue our series on the salmon myth tonight. As we told you last night, most of it comes from the ocean farms in Chile or Canada. Today we look deeper into the controversy those farms are creating. Here's Simon Gutierrez. On the docks in Newport, if the writing isn't on the wall, it's on a salmon fisherman's bumper. It's not a welcome industry. Bob Owie has been fishing off the coast for more than 30 years. This dock is, is mostly salmon trollers, yeah. He doesn't much care for the salmon farms that have taken over the market. It's conflicting with uh, natural fish, natural sale of natural fish, and, and that's what we're basically trying to run a business on. Since a single farm can easily produce half a million fish, there is more salmon on the market than ever before. That drives down prices at the docks. In 1988, we were getting uh Prices upwards of three bucks a pound, and now we're last year we were looking at a dollar, dollar and a quarter. Salmon farming became a big time industry in British Columbia in the mid 1980s. Now the province has more than 80 active farms. 
People in the industry say they're just meeting the growing demand for salmon. But with farming, of course, we can produce a fresh fish year-round, and that's what people are looking for. But these days, fishermen aren't the only critics of salmon farming. People in Canada have concerns about the farm's impact on the environment. We're concerned that um, disease is being transmitted into the wild from the farms. We're also concerned about the quantity of waste. Some of these farms hold as many as a million salmon, and this waste is going directly into the ocean. There are also concerns about farm fish escaping into the wild. And Canada's Department of Fisheries and Oceans admits the fish are escaping. Already, Atlantic salmon have been found in 80 rivers around Vancouver Island, and they've also been found as far away as Alaska, where there's no salmon farming. But salmon farmers say those concerns are exaggerated, that the industry has spent years and millions of dollars making salmon farming environmentally sound. Over the last two years, we've relocated many of our farms, we've rebuilt them, tightened the anchor lines, improved our nets and the structures of the farms. In fact, the Canadian government recently finished a comprehensive review of its salmon farming industry and found a low overall risk to the environment. If you take a look around, I think you find when you meet our people that um, we really care about the environment and we're really serious about doing things in a responsible way. And there is no doubt a demand for their product. Even the fisherman's market in Eugene carries farm fresh salmon. They're both Chinook salmon, and this is a farm raised Chinook salmon from British Columbia. But Ryan Rogers says he doesn't uh, like doing it. And I would far rather uh, help promote local families than, uh, you know, these are corporate farms. Rogers encourages customers to buy wild salmon. When you look at the fish side by side, the, the fresh or the uh, wild salmon generally sells itself. It looks nicer, it looks firmer. Critics of farmed salmon also point out that the flesh is naturally gray but dyed pink. They also raise concerns about the antibiotics the fish are fed to keep them free of disease. But there's no doubt about which is cheaper and salmon farmers are quick to defend their fish. It's a top quality product, a fresh top quality product. It's safe to say the jury's still out on farmed salmon. No one is sure about the long-term impacts on the environment, and only time will tell if farms and fishermen can coexist. The debate will ultimately play out just as much at the grocery counter as on the ocean. On the Pacific Coast, Simon Gutierrez, Nine News.